Hello, my name is Tom Scott and I am training to become the United States first ever Olympian in karate. Today I have my strength and conditioning coach Chris Stratus and we're going to take you through a typical training regimen. I've been working with Tom for about eight years now. Uh, we're excited to share uh, a glimpse at his training so you have an idea of what it takes to train to be a karate athlete. Uh, this is not a typical bodybuilding workout, this is all functional. Every exercise selected has been chosen with a purpose so that he can perform at his best in the ring. All right. Let's get to it. Let's go. <laughs> in our strength days, we use tri-sets uh, for our exercises to divide them up throughout the workout. Our first exercise today is a band-resisted trap bar deadlift. This version we use is focusing on the concentric movement. The bands force him to accelerate through the top of the movement to full extension. So he's pushing force into the ground, accelerating his hips forward all the way through the top of the movement as the bands exert more resistance on him. Since we're only focusing on concentric, He'll drop the weight after that and not absorb the eccentric portion. In karate, you're either lifting your leg quickly to kick or you're moving. We need to be able to apply power into the ground quickly. So we're going to be doing five of these and then we'll move on to the other two exercises, hit the rest of the tricep, and then we'll be back for five more. Our second exercise is a depth drop to an explosive hurdle jump to a lateral shuffle. Any time that he's in the ring, he's got to be able to not only accelerate himself in to score on his opponent, but be able to control that movement and decelerate as well, and then shift into a new direction. We're working on minimizing our ground contact time, so having a very high rate of force production. As soon as he hits the turf, his objective is to get back up again, move explosively, and then shift into a new direction. Our next exercise is a variation of a payoff press. This time we're going to incorporate an overhead lift to the movement as well. We want to make sure that when he's looking to change direction in the ring, he's able to maintain stiffness in his core so that he's as efficient as he possibly can be. So it's going to be a slow three count press out, keeping his hands right in front of his body, then a three count press overhead, and then a three count lowering and three count return. So those are the three exercises in our first tri set. Typically, Tom will go through each exercise in the tri set three times. We've got three sets. Um, and once he's worked his way through all three exercises three times, he makes his way over to the easy button taps it for a mental reminder that that work was easy work. Our next exercise is a sandbag reverse lunge with rotation. So this is another core exercise, but this time we are using some movement at the legs. So this is going to help him with controlling his speed deceleration when it comes time to exit after scoring, as well as accelerating in to take an opportunity to score, all while reinforcing that core stiffness so that he can move efficiently. Some of the cues that he's going to have while he's doing this exercise, he wants to keep tension pulling away on the handles as he's going, keep his chest up tall throughout the lunge movement, and not let the bag control his sway. He's going to stay tall, fighting the rotation as he's stepping back into the lunge. This next exercise is a band-resisted inverted row. This is an important horizontal pulling motion that actually translates very closely to pulling a punch back in competition. When Tom's competing, that's an important part of his execution. He can't just throw his arm out there. He's got to show completion of that technique with high speed. And sometimes that can make the difference between scoring and not scoring. This particular variation of an inverted row adds the band resistance, which is an accommodating resistance. As he gets closer to the bar, he's bringing his chest up to the bar. As he gets closer, the resistance gets harder. So he's got to force himself to accelerate all the way through the completion of the movement. This is the last exercise in our second try set. This one is a bear crawl hover with a sandbag tug. Tom is going to be kneeling over the sandbag with his knees off the ground, only his hands and his feet touching. This is forcing his core to engage. While he's there, he's going to reach back with his arm, keeping that arm straight, and just apply tension to the bag. He's not looking to drag it across the floor or throw it away. Everything about this movement is about stability. You'll notice as he's performing the exercise, the sandbag does not move. The purpose of this is just to create that tension. Sometimes if you're just moving a weight rapidly under that kind of positioning, other muscles help compensate, and that's what we're looking to avoid. We're looking to focus on stability and just creating tension as he's performing the movement. Our next exercise is a band-resisted push-up. Uh, this is going to be an explosive hand speed movement to replicate the motion that he needs when punching in the ring. You'll notice that the band is up high on his back, not low on his mid-back. 
This should be up high just below the shoulders. He's looking to push with speed all the way through the top of the movement, keeping his body straight, lowering himself under control, and again, returning to the top as fast as he can, accelerating against the resistance of the band. Next, we've got an explosive medicine ball throwing movement. This is placed as a contrast with the resisted push-ups. This is very similar in the ring to as he's making his movements and approaching for a scoring opportunity, staying low, driving his punch with force right into his opponent's body. So he's gonna come from a half kneeling position, jump up to a split squat jump, and then immediately a rotational shot put throw against the wall. So he's looking to be quick, and as soon as his feet land, he's gonna rotate and throw the ball into the wall. All right, the last exercise in this tri set is a band resisted knee drive. This is one that translates directly to Tom's ability to get his knee up quickly for those head kicks to score in the ring. So he's gonna start in a half kneeling position, explosively step up onto the box, looking for full extension of his support leg on the box and a fast knee drive all the way up, fighting the resistance of the band. The whole time he's gonna maintain tall posture, core stays tight and full extension on that support leg. Now that we're done with Tom's strength work for the day, we're finishing off with some conditioning work. This is designed to help him endure his three minute matches, be able to have maximum effort exertion throughout those matches and be able to recover very quickly. So in this finisher, what we have today, he's gonna to be on the air bike and it's gonna be 30 seconds of moderate intensity, uh, then 20 seconds of high intensity and then 10 seconds of maximum effort all out to finish that round. As soon as he's done with that last 10 seconds maximum effort burst, he's gonna hop off the bike and do some active recovery. In Tom's case, since we're preparing and trying to translate directly into the ring, his active recovery is going to be his karate movements that he uses in the ring. After that, he'll get back on the bike and we'll repeat that two more times. All right guys, that's it. Thank you guys for training with me today. You saw a general day of my training in the gym and in the karate school. And as you could see, everything directly applies. So what we do in the gym, helps me in my sport. Sport karate is really just a fast game of tag with punches and kicks. Again, you have to have control over your opponent's safety, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and you do need to build a lot of speed to get there. And thank you guys for watching this video.